My name is Raquel Velez. Uh, I'm Rockbot on Twitter. Uh, you can also find me on GitHub, etc. Uh, I work at Storify, which is a social media curation platform. So basically, a lot of journalists will uh, will use Storify to kind of get first-person accounts of events happening in real time. Uh, and so, if you don't use it, you should. Uh, but you probably have already seen uh, some of our users or CNN. Wall Street Journal, uh, the White House. A lot of people use our stuff. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, so today, I really want to talk about front-end development in Node. And um, so let's just kind of get started. I, I like things to be a little bit interactive. I do this uh, super dorky thing um, called a dial. So instead of raising your hand, because everybody does that, uh, use your hand and stick out your thumb like this, right? And uh, tell me. And please be honest, how, how familiar are you with Node.js from I have only just heard about this right now to I push to production like every single day? So I'm seeing a whole lot of mostly done. OK, cool. This is exactly the right place for you guys to be. Um, so awesome. No problem. Let's kind of go over. I'm going to do a lot. This is going to be a little bit of a drinking from a fire hose sort of thing. So if it freaks you out, don't worry. I'm putting all of my slides up online. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Just try to follow along as much as you can. Uh, so really, Node.js is server-side JavaScript. Kind of blows your mind, right? Like, so if you think about it like PHP or Ruby on Rails, those are server-side languages. And here comes this little you know, Node thing that's like, hey, let's play with JavaScript on the server. And you're like, what? You mean I can use the same language on the front end and the back end? OK, if that doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what will. I mean, maybe like you know, monkeys on Mars or something. But um, so Node, the, the name of the game of Node is real time. It's built on Chrome's V8 engine. Uh, so it's super fast. Uh, it's asynchronous in nature. That means that basically we have a single thread. It's, an, it's not multi-threaded. It's single threaded. Uh, and all that really means is that whenever you're sending instructions to, uh, to the like, machine to like, do stuff, you only send one at a time. But as soon as you send one off, you send off the next instruction. And then you wait for, the, for your first instruction to come back with using a callback. If that doesn't make sense to you, that's OK. Don't worry about it. Um, but the big piece is it's, it's front end and back end JavaScript. Uh, it's lightweight and customizable. So uh, the core creators of Node have really pushed to make sure that the core is super, super tiny. And then uh, if you're familiar with Ruby uh, and, and Rails and stuff, uh, you've probably heard of gems. We have the same sort of thing in Node called packages or modules. And so you can basically build your, your, your app up with all of those modules. So you can just have this really tiny little core and then add more stuff to it. Uh, and then you're probably wondering, what does this JIFA sniff thing mean? Uh, so basically, it's an acronym for JavaScript is fun, and so Node is fun. So if you like JavaScript, you're going to love Node. Uh, and so just kind of trust me on this. It gets really fun. You'll never want to stop. Um, so to get Node, just go online to nodejs.org. Not that hard. Uh, you don't have to do that right now. Do it when you get home. Again, like I said, I will post my slides up online so you can follow along at home. Uh, but the reason I love Node the most is that I get to prototype really quickly. So anytime I'm starting a brand new app, even if it's just something small, like my mom wants, I don't know, a little to-do app or something like that, I'll just spin up a Node server. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that today. Uh, so I use Express as an MVC, uh, dial MVC. Model view controller. OK, good. Most people know what that is, so I don't have to explain that. Uh, so I use Express as that. And then I use HTML, or I use Jade for my HTML preprocessor, and I use Stylus for my CSS preprocessor, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Are we cool? Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah? All right. Excellent. OK. I should also note that you can use, uh, you can use whatever preprocessors you want with Express if you, if you prefer SAS or less or EJS or whatever. That's fine. You can totally customize it. But today, we're going to talk about Jaden and Stylus. Okay. So um, 
Express. Express is an MVC. It's a model view controller framework. Basically, the, the point of it is, uh, is just kind of organizing your code in a really nice way and then providing a back end that allows you to just kind of create routes that will allow you to go from, you know, someone goes on their browser and says, hey, you know, take me to uh, blah -de blah dot com slash whatchamacallit, you know, whatever. Um, and, <laughs> and that'll basically take you through the system, right? It takes you, it take, you have a, that's your route, and then you go through a controller that basically says, all right, uh, Somebody has hit this, this you know, site or whatever, and then let's talk to whatever models we have, let's get whatever data we need to send to our view, and our view is our, like what we see on, on our screen, right? So uh, it's, Express is really easy, it's really fun to use. Um, if you want to install it, you basically just follow these really basic things. So how many people are, are comfortable with the command line? Uh, we've got a little bit of stuff, all right. That's good, that's good, okay. So um, if you're afraid of the command line, you'll note that there are not very many instructions here, um, and you'll become really familiar really quickly. Uh, but the way that this works is you use NPM, which is the node packages module thing. It's the node package manager. Uh, to install in Express. So you just use npm install Express. And if you want to, you can add a dash G, which will basically make it global for you. Uh, so you don't have to, so the way that Node works is, is it installs all of its modules in a local directory called Node Modules. Uh, and, then, and then it basically refers to that. But if you wanted to make it more global, so you wanted to use Express on multiple projects, then you can just add the dash G, which is what I generally do. But if it's your first time, you might not want to do that. That's fine. Uh, then you can use Express kind of to build your app for you. And so you have this project name, and then you can add a stylus as your CSS preprocessor. And then you go into your project name, and then you use NPM to install all of the dependencies of that app. So you have this file called package.json that basically has all of those customizable modules that I was saying before, and you, can, you use that file to add more. And then you basically just run NPM install, and wha-bam! Uh, you've got everything installed. It'll connect to the server and grabs everything for you. And then you use node app.js. So uh, and then it'll basically say, hey, take a look at localhost. And that's what you would do. So I'm actually going to show you how to do that. Uh, let's see. Can we see? All right. So if I do this. Then you can see that if I just do node app.js, now it's saying I'm listening on port 3000. And I'm going to throw this up on here. Everybody can see that, right? And there you go. So this is like the super bare bones basic express. So fantastic. Let's go back. All right. So then, uh, so now we want to make it a little bit prettier. So Jade, uh, who's familiar with HTML preprocessors or templating agents? Yeah, not really. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go a little bit, a little bit more detail on these. Uh, so Jade is essentially a templating uh, engine that basically it's nice and clean. It's intuitive. I love it. It's it's my favorite. Um, but basically, if you think about it, in HTML, it's just really basic. It's just a lot of text. But have you ever wondered what, what, how great it would be if you could just kind of loop through all of your LIs and your big old UL? Like, it just, sometimes you have like 70 different, uh, you know, uh, line items in, in, your, or in your list, right? And you don't want to have to go through and, and write every single one from scratch. Well, now you can use a preprocessor to kind of take care of that for you. Uh, and so you can go online and find out more about it. But I'm going to go through some of the features of Jaden specifically. So variables and loops. So you'll see here I've got uh, a variable called pets, right? So I've got a cat, a dog, a mouse, great. Uh, and then for each pet in this variable pets, give me an li and put it in there. And 
So you'll see on the top, this is, that's the Jade language. And then out on the output, you have just straight up HTML. Similarly, I can use functions. And in, in Jade, they're called mixins. Uh, and what you can do is you can create this function, essentially, that will have, uh, so you have your, your function name. And you, you can actually pass in parameters. And then you tell the function what to do with those parameters. So in this case, I've got some date that I want to put into my uh, <laughs> trip date. Uh, <laughs> And, and basically, it'll, it'll come out right that, like, just like that for you. It says, uh, it, it tells you your class, and then you can just kind of do that. Now, if you can imagine, if you, would, if you would combine loops with these functions, can you imagine how much time you would save from having to hand write all of this really extensive and kind of annoying HTML? Uh, so to me, I think this is pretty awesome. Then there are some more really great pieces of Jade. Um, extends, blocks, and append. The idea behind this is every single page in your app probably shares the exact same header data, probably shares most of the same script data, and the only thing that changes is, is your content, right? So what you can do, actually, is you can create a layout that will have all of your header data that's going to be shared across every single one of your files and has most of your script data um, at the bottom of your page that will go across most of your files. And the only thing that changes is your content. So you can do that once and then just change the content every single time. And if you need to add a little bit more on your scripts or something like that, you can. Does that make sense? Yeah? All right. Uh, hopefully, okay. So, <laughs> uh, so now we're going to go in and we're going to modify index.jade uh, to kind of throw in a little bit of what we've just learned. So I'm going to do some super light coding, like ridiculously super light coding. Uh, yeah. OK. Uh, let's see. And let's do this. And hopefully you can see that. All right. So what we have here is we have this mix in here. And I'm just going to look at that, live coding. <laughs> uh, and we're going to comment this out and this out. And we're just going to, so you can see what I've done here is I'm extending this layout, right? And I have a mix in. I have this block called content, which is basically all that I'm going to be putting in. And that's it. So I'm going to save that. And I will now go over. And if I refresh my page, now I've got a label and a box, and, or an input, and another label and an input, and then a little button. The button doesn't actually do anything yet, but you can at least see that this is kind of cool, right? So uh, just this into that. All right, so now let's make it a little bit prettier, because you know, nobody likes ugly HTML pages. And for that, we're going to use Stylus. So Stylus is our CSS preprocessor. So, how many people are familiar with CSS preprocessors, maybe SAS or something? OK. More people are, are familiar with, with CSS preprocessors. Excuse me. And that's great. So I'm going to go kind of fairly quickly through this. Uh, but so what we have, again, it's clean. It's intuitive. Um, I should note that both of these white space is extremely important. Uh, if you are off by a tab or something, it'll totally mess things up, which I understand is probably one of the reasons why people don't like to switch over to this, because you know, your curly braces and your semicolons, those are really comforting. Uh, but you gain so much more by just letting those little comforts you know, slide. So let's talk about mix-ins. Let's say, how many of you really, really love really love vendor prefixes. Yeah, I didn't think so either. Um, so nobody likes the vendor prefixes, but right now, at least for the foreseeable you know, next couple of months until somebody decides to finally change something or whatever, we're going to have to deal with them. But wouldn't it be great if you didn't have to worry about them? You didn't have to worry about, uh, oops, I forgot. You know, to put the Z in the Moz or something like that. I always make typos. Having to copy and paste, I always mess something up. So having a, 
a mix-in that basically allows you to just say, border radius, five pixels, done. Moving on, let's go home. That's fantastic. Now I can basically just say, just focus on the one line for border radius, and it'll take care of all of that for me, right? So I can just write it once, and then I can use border radius one time for every single little selector I have to worry about. Similarly, or in addition, if you really like this notion of mix-ins, uh, with Stylus, there's an extra little plugin called Nib that takes care of all of these and more. So they're already written for you. So you don't even have to write your mix-ins yourself. They just take care of it for you. And it, it, it's not just uh, vendor prefixes. You've got things like ClearFix, which I never remember how, like, what goes into ClearFix. I have to always look it up. It's like uh, you have to make sure the clear and the you know, display, and then there's the, uh, or ellipses, right? If you want to add a nice little ellipsis in there, that all of these little steps, I don't need to worry about it anymore. I can just say ellipsis, <laughs> done. So uh, it's a really useful add-on. Then we've got things like variables. Uh, I remember hearing this story once about a, a very large corporation with a very large web uh, presence if you will, uh, that had probably about 75 different definitions for blue. And it wasn't that necessarily that they had those definitions for blue, but somebody was like, I don't remember what the blue is. So they just kind of went with their little color picker and said, oh, well, I think it's that. And then they just took that HTML or that, uh, you know, that hex and plugged it into the CSS. And when you have a really large team, that just starts to get ugly, right? Or how many of you have ever had a client that said, you know what, I don't like blue. I like orange. Make all of the buttons orange. Have you ever had that? I have, yeah, yeah, right. It's so infuriating. So what do you do? You have to go in, you have to do a control, find, all, replace, all. Hopefully they're not different versions of the same you know, blue. But with something like stylus and variables, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You declare your variable at the very top, say, this is my active button face. Done. Now, oh, client comes in and says, I don't like blue, I want orange. No problem. Change it, and you're done, right? I mean, hopefully you've got a nice designer who will actually talk to the person and you know, make sure everything's OK, but that's not my job. Um, <laughs> I'm not a designer. <laughs> um, but so you can see, like, it, it's really nice. You can just kind of throw all these things together. And I'm really organized in my code, or I try to be really organized. Uh, I prefer to have a separate file for all of my button faces, and then another file for uh, all of my inputs and how those are styled, and then you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, you really want to make sure that you only have one style sheet that you're including on your site, right? Because every single time you have to call the the server for another style sheet that slows things down. So if you just have one, that's what you want. Well, beautifully, fortunately, Stylus will take care of that for you again. And you can use import to basically have a nice organized set of code. So every single style sheet is, it, our Stylus sheet is, is separated. But then when you're done, you, you just use, uh, use import, and it'll compile it all for you. And if you want to, you can even have it minified to have it nice and small so that Nobody has to worry about that. Uh, so going back to our nice, super light live coding, we're going to modify our style sheet. And let's see. So now our style sheet is like so. And oh, I'm so fast. OK. <laughs> I thought that was funny. All right. And so now you can see we've got a nicer looking page. Again, you can tell I'm not a designer because it's a really ugly shade of green, but oh, whatever. Uh, and all right. So is that making sense so far? Everybody's following along pretty well. Everybody think that are you guys sold that that you know preprocessors are pretty cool? Yeah, I want to see some nods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, okay, so now let's make it a little bit more complicated, right? Let's, what if we have a database, right? I'm not going to actually, you know, serve up a, a database right now, but let's say, hypothetically, we wanted to 
start going into the actual server side of stuff and check out what's in there. Um, oops, wait, that was not what I wanted to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify index.js. And what index.js is, it's, a, it's the controller that when somebody goes to uh, our, in this case, localhost, just slash, that's going to route all the way through to index, to the index controller. And that's where we're going to say, well, now we're going to render this page, and we're going to put in this information into that page. So we're going to do that now. Um, so first I'm going to show you app.js, which is really the whole application. Uh, you don't want to? There we go. All right. So you'll see here we've got uh, we're, all the stuff. If it doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. If it's all JavaScript to you. All right. Um, I love my cheesy jokes. They're great. Uh, so like I said, here's your, here's your route, right? So in your application, get slash, and basically go to the routes index, which is your controller, which is right here. And so what we're going to do right now, what it does is it just sends off the title express, which if you remember on the very first version, that it said express, right? Like, welcome to express. Uh, but we're going to take that out. And we're going to throw in a little bit, just like we said, we're going to throw in this index, and we're going to call it sample project. And uh, we'll throw in this Susan B. Anthony. Now, the only thing is that whenever you change something on the server side, you're going to have to restart your machine pretty much entirely. So, oh, that was really, it took forever. Uh, OK. It was sarcasm. So uh, you'll notice it says Roy G. Biv is our placeholder here. And, and in, our, in our thing, we changed it to Susan B. Anthony. And, oh, of course it hasn't actually changed. Because what haven't we done yet? We haven't changed the index.jade. Right? So we have to make sure that we change our index, uh, HTML, our, our layout, to actually accept all of this new data. So what we need to do is we need to change our loop, or we need to change the mixins that we currently have uh, and put in new parameters. Right? And we're going to add in a loop so we don't have to actually write two mixins, we can, or two lines for mixins. We just have the one. So we'll do that now. And so here. Uh, no, here, there we go. And we're going to take those out and put those in. So you can see, I mean, in this case, sure, I've, I've got two lines that I'm changing into two lines. But if you can imagine having seven inputs on a page, now I can take seven mix in inputs, or seven lines, and turn it into just two, which would be really nice. So. Now, it should, so Roy G. Biv, I don't know if you can see that at all, but now it's Susan B. Anthony. So you can see that I basically am taking this input.label uh, and input.name and then input.whatever. Uh, cool. So that's pretty much what I have on, on uh, stylus and Jade and Express. But hopefully you've seen just how easy it is. I didn't do very much more than everything that I just showed you in my presentation. It's literally as easy as just uh, installing Express, spinning it up. Now you have a server on your machine that you can just go ahead and start playing around with. And what you might notice is that after a while, it's going to feel really nice. OK, so great. I have all these things. Now you can add some JavaScript in there. Uh, but what if you wanted to like, start adding some routes? Like, What if you wanted to press the button? What happens next? Uh, what, how do you want to move things forward? What if you want more pages? Well, now is your opportunity. I'm going to put all of this stuff up on GitHub. Uh, go ahead and fork the repo and start playing with stuff. Right? Hack away. Add new routes. Include more layout and styling. Uh, and then be sure to ask questions. I'm really easily accessible. I'm happy to help you out. If you have any questions about Node in general, you can use IRC or you can just use any other options online. Um, but absolutely, you know, remember the, the whole point of Node is jiff sniff. JavaScript is fun, and so Node is fun. So I want you to have fun too. Uh, 
So here's my contact information. Uh, like I said, I'll be putting these slides up. You can see the GitHub repo is up there as well. Uh, but that's pretty much all I have. Hopefully that excites you, and hopefully that makes you want to just go out and start playing with Node. We use Node 100% at Storify, uh, and I hope that you will learn to love Node as much as I do. And if you don't, that's OK, too. I won't take it personally, but at least give it a try. All right, thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Yes. Sure. The question was, uh, what's the advantage of using Jade and Stylus over something like Haml and Sass? And the answer is, there isn't really much. Uh, it really comes down to syntax. Uh, Jade and Stylus are really, they were created for Node, whereas Haml and Sass were really more created for Rails. Uh, that's really all the difference. Uh, when you want to play around, it, it's just syntax. Uh, I think it's more important that you understand the the beauties of preprocessors, uh, but I mean, and, and also just the beauty of using Node. Uh, <laughs> but there's no real major difference. Other questions? Yes. Yep. Uh, no, actually. So the question was. Uh, if you wanted to use something like Backbone, can you really use it with Express? Are they the, are the, do they conflict with each other? Or like, are they the same sort of thing? Um, and the, the answer is not quite. So Express is server-side JavaScript, right? So you're having, so when you load up a page, uh, you don't, the client never sees anything from Express specifically. It's just your, whatever JavaScript, you know, uh, HTML and CSS that you would normally send to any a page via, say, using a PHP ba uh, backend or uh, a Ruby on Rails backend. Uh, Backbone is a client-side MV star. Uh, so the way that that works is basically you end up including extra libraries on the client side that, if you think about it, the person, the, the, the user of your site, if, you're, if you have Backbone, is also going to have to download uh, via you know, the script tags, uh, all of the backbone and all of the extra stuff that you're putting in there. That said, backbone is perfect for certain things, and Express is, is perfect for other things. You can absolutely use them both at the same time. We currently do at, at Storify. We have a node backend uh, using Express, and then we also use backbone on the front end. So. Uh, so I, I would not say so. I would say that the, uh, the question was, is there, any is there any overlapping functionality between the two? And uh, really, when I think about Backbone, I think about using local storage and then making like Ajax calls to the back end. Whereas when you're using something like, like Express, you are also making Ajax calls to the back end, but uh, you're doing things. It's, it, I would use Express more for doing things like controllers uh, and your routing for the actual major pages. Does that make sense? Cool. Other questions? This side. Uh, yep. Do you have a library that you recommend that, that's an MVC both the back end and the front end concurrently? I, the question was, do I recommend any library that, that does both an MVC on the front end and the back end? Uh, and the answer is no. I, I don't have one. Uh, I have never done that. Like, I've never needed to use both an MVC on the front end and the back end. I think what you would probably want to do is just have a backbone or something similar on the front end, maybe an Ember or something, um, and then using something like Express or Flatiron on the back end. Flatiron is just like Express, but it's written slightly differently and it's made by somebody else. But welcome to open source. <laughs> yes? I'm sorry, can you please repeat that? Uh, the question is, is, is backend JavaScript limited? Uh, and the answer is no, actually. I, I don't think so. Uh, so a lot of people associate JavaScript with being something that you use pri primarily for futzing with the DOM, right? And, and at the end of the day, the language itself is, 
it, it, it's very elegant. It's like this you know, scheme with the Java look, right? Um, it's function, functional, functionality-wise, uh, it is, uh, it's really a complex language. You've got your closures, and you've got your, uh, you've got your prototyping, and you have all this beautiful stuff that you can do with JavaScript. All, of it, all that stuff that you can do on the front end, you can do on the back end as well. Uh, but in terms of, uh, I think if you wanted to do multi-threading, you're limited, right? Because Node is single-threaded. It's not multi-threaded. So if you're looking to have multiple streams of data happening at the exact same time because you're like a, if you're coming from Python or C++ background, you're not going to be able to do that in Node. That's just not functionality-wise. That doesn't exist. Um, but it's a different language. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's limited. Uh, I'm sure there are limitations. Maybe I'm just not you know, the expert yet. Yes? Uh, question is, what database am I using with Node? Uh, at Storify, we use MongoDB. Uh, but you can also use CouchDB. You can use MySQL. You can use uh, pretty much anything you really want. Yes? Um, so the question is, let's say, I'm going to rephrase it if you don't mind. Uh, let's say I have an existing backend in C Sharp or PHP or whatever. Is there any way that I can slowly migrate it towards Node if I so choose? Uh, I would say, so you have a couple of options. Uh, option one is you implement pieces of your website using Node. So if you have like a chat client or if you have uh, some sort of uh, multi-user asynchronous sort of thing going on, then you can, you can certainly have both running at the same time on the same application. Uh, but if you are looking to actually change the entire back end, you're going to have to just pick. Um, you, you can't just kind of like have these two bindings together that will slowly turn into the one with a little snowball sort of thing. It, it gets ugly quickly. I would say your best bet is to either pick a component that you're just going to use Node for, or uh, rewrite the whole thing, <laughs> which no one wants to hear. But uh, I, I generally would recommend using it for a brand new component or using it for a brand new site. Other questions? Yes? Yes. Uh, it is, actually. Um, so in the same way that when you have a PHP or a Ruby sort of service, you're going to have to restart. However, there are modules, packages, that will kind of automatically restart things for you. Uh, one of my favorites is Nodemon for local uh, stuff that basically just watches to see when you've changed something on the back end, and then will restart the server for you. So you don't actually have to sit there and you know, change your window and you know, control C and then run it again or whatever. Um, but you do have to, because now you've, you've basically changed the functionality of the back end that's kind of static um, instead of dynamic. So, other questions? I see no hands, so I'm going to assume you all know everything now. Or you can just come and ask me anytime. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm really easy to get a hold of. All right? Thank you so much.